Today is November 26, 1998, with Rabbi Abba Brunspiegel, B-R-O-N-S-P-I-E-G-E-L, or B-R-O-N-S-P-I-G-E-L. Okay. I'm Lori Fine. We're in Brooklyn, New York, the United States yeah. of America. Our language is English. Okay. Today is November 26, 1998, with Rabbi Abba Brunspiegel. 98, yeah. 1998. Oh. I'm Lori Fine. We're in Brooklyn, New York, the United States of America. Our language today is English. Good afternoon. Could you please tell us your name with the spelling? My name is Abba Brunspiegel. It's spelled A-B-B-A. -B -B -A. Brunspiegel is B-R-O-N-S-P-I-E-G-E-L. What name was on your birth certificate? A legal name. This was my legal name. Were you ever known by any other names? No. Any nicknames? No. Is there any name that you've used in America? No, I just have a bunch of people. When were you born? Uh, August 25th, 39. And could you tell us how old you are now? Uh, I am now 59. Where were you born? I was born in Demblin, Poland. What was this near? Excuse me? What was it near? What larger city? It was near Lublin. Uh, I'd like you to list your family members, starting with my your family father members, and mother. My father's name was Leib, and my mother's name was Hannah. What was her maiden name? Cooperman. And brothers and sisters? My brothers uh, are Yisroel, and, Yos and uh, Yisroel is, is the only living brother. Then I had Yosef, and then I had... Uh, uh, sisters, I had Elke and Rezel, who both died in the camps. Were there any other children in the family? There were two uh, other brothers who died very young, and I don't remember. I'd like you to describe your family, starting with your father. How would you describe him to us? Excuse my Could father? Could you de describe your father? In what sense? Physically? Oh, it's, well, he was... Uh, I don't know, about uh, f uh, five, eight. Uh, he was a handsome man. He was a businessman all his, he was a businessman most of his life. What business was he in in Europe? He was in textile business, I think. We had a business uh, in Demblin itself. And both my father and my mother were involved in the business. Was that wholesale or retail? I think it was both. And uh, uh, my father was a very active person. He was active in the community and also late during the war he was involved with some sort of resistance, uh, whatever resistance there was in the camp. He was like an organizer and uh, after the war he was very involved in uh, Hatzala work and getting food and clothing for the refugees uh, and so on. Was he involved in communal work before the war? Yeah, he was, yeah. I don't know time? exactly what he did, but he was involved in communal work. My father was always an Askin. How did he dress? Excuse me? How did he dress? Well, before the war, I still have a picture of him in the kapata before the war. Uh, but after the war, since I know him, he, he was dressed in a suit. In a, no, he was a, like, he was a Gere Chassid, but many Gere see them after the war were dressed in suits without a, he didn't, uh, before, he, since I know him, he did not have a beard. Did he have one before the war that you were what? told? Was he, did he have a beard before the war? I don't know. I don't remember this. On the picture that I have of the Kapata, he was a young man. He did not have a beard. Do you know anything about his schooling? About, no, yeah. I don't. He, lear he learned the Mestam and the Besmedrish in Demblin, where he was born. But he, I, I don't think he had any formal schooling. Do you know if he was ever in the military? No. He was not. What comes to mind when you think of him? He was a very generous person and a good sense of humor. Could you tell us about your mother? My mother's name was Hanna, and uh, her maiden name was Cooperman, and uh, she was a very beautiful uh, woman very charming, very gracious, and extremely good, a, good, a very good heart. She gave of herself to everyone. 
And she was in the beginning, she was involved in my helping my father in his business. Later on, when my father, when we lived in Berlin, she also she was helping him in his in the business he was in, and uh, she also was very involved in helping people. She used to go visit hospitals. She visited uh, even Mesh. I remember she used to go to Meshugoyim Hoys. Some Eden from the survivors were became insane, and they were in uh, insane asylums. She used to go to those places to visit those people, and. Uh, even uh, in a sla uh, the last years of her life, she spent in Brookdale Hospital, in, in the, uh, chronic, the Jewish Chronic Disease Hospital, where my father uh, passed away. He had a stroke the last 10 years of his life. So she used to be there every day, and she used to uh, help uh, many patients in the hospital. She used to feed them, help them get rest, and do other things. F uh, in, in the course of Bikkur Cholim. She was very active in the Bikkur Cholim of, of the Satma Bikkur Cholim of Borough Park and, and Williamsburg. She was an extremely kind and good person. Where was she born? She was born in Gnivashif. It's a small town near Demblin. And then she was, a, my father and my mother were cousins. Do you know who introduced them? No, I don't. Could you tell me about your siblings? My siblings, well, my the, my sisters uh, that uh, that were killed during the war. I don't. I cannot tell you anything. I have a vague recollection. I I remember their presence. Like Elke was very was tall, beautiful. Rezel, I remember vaguely, except that she played with me. And we had another uh, girl in our house, like an adopted daughter. Her name was Rochel, who like took care of me. But I don't remember them that. I just remember that she was, Rochel was very nice to me. She made me feel good. She gave me whether a cookie or whatever, you know, a gift, a toy or whatever. Could you tell us about your brothers? Uh, your brothers. My brothers. So I have Saul and uh, and Yasl. So, so both of them were in the camps together with me until until uh, almost the end. In the end, uh, they we were separated. They they went to Buchenwald, and they, and then eventually to Theresienstadt. They were both liberated in Theresienstadt. They didn't. I don't think they knew that they were in the same camp. Uh, in Theresienstadt, certainly not. In Buchenwald, maybe I don't remember. Uh, but they were liberated in the same camp. What do you want to know about my brothers? Who's now survived? Right now, the only surviving brother is Sal. Yossel also survived, but he died in 1989. Do you remember grandparents? No, I don't remember them. I remember my grandmother vaguely. I am named after my grandfather, whose name was Abu. And whose father was this? My father's father. I don't remember my mother's father, Chaim Yitzchak Kuperman was his name. He lived in Gnevishev. He was a Shoichet. Do you have any recollection of your home? My, uh, I mean, our, uh, the home itself, vaguely. I do remember the ceiling, but there's nothing to, to, to describe. It was a ceiling. Uh, I do remember, uh, no, actually, I know, I cannot say I remember the home. No, I cannot say. What's your earliest memory? I can I actually I never thought about it. my earliest memory. Oh, what do you mean? Since I was born, I don't really know what to tell. No, I don't know what to tell you. I. Do you remember leaving your house because your family was told to leave? That yes, I remember being uh, leaving the house. Yes, I didn't know at that time what it meant. Why I'm leaving? I knew I. Yes, I remember leaving the house. I, I'll tell you what I do remember. What comes to my mind often? It's not the first memory or the second. I know the order. I do remember when the Germans came into uh, to our town. They made the right way. Uh, I don't know. They, they we still lived in our home initially, and that one day they showed the Germans came into our house, and they wanted my father. Do you remember them coming in? Yeah, yeah, I remember German with in, in uniform. Do you remember the color of the uniform? No, I don't remember. 
but uh, they were I, I right away I knew that they 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 are not good ones I knew they are bad people I, what gave you that idea I right away my mother I I became scared right away they had the weapons on themselves and uh, how did they talk do you remember the they tone? spoke German with the tone of voice I don't remember the tone of voice but I, that, I'll tell you what I do remember they now my father uh, we had an attic which was not which was like a little bit hidden you had to know the entrance to the attic. Now my father was in uh, in the attic. I knew I had seen him go up to the attic. So my mother, when the Germans came, my mother told me quickly, I should not say where my that, that my father is in the attic. She kept telling me again and again, I should not say this. And they were looking mainly for my father. I don't know what they I don't know what they did and how they looked. And all I remember is. <coughs> Without being, without, I don't remember if a German asked me anything or not, but I, I only spoke Yiddish. I spoke Yiddish only at the time. So I said in Yiddish, the Tata Nishtoa von Boyden. I said, my father is not in the attic. I didn't realize that that was a giveaway. But the only thing is they did not understand Yiddish, so it didn't mean anything. They didn't know what the word Boydem is. They may have understood my father, my Tata, because in German, Tati, ta, Tati is a common... But anyway, I said my, ta, the Tata and Ishtua from Boydin. So uh, I, in essence, I gave it away, but they didn't pick it up. Did anyone react in the family when you said that? I don't remember. But anyway, they left, and, and eventually we left the house, and we went, we were... Oh, yeah, I'll tell you what I remember then. I don't remember now if this was... Yeah, this was still in our house. During that period, when the Germans came in, we still lived in our house for a while, and food became a problem. Now, my parents were rich, so in the beginning, they didn't take away our money. We still were able to, to do things that we were able... My parents were able to walk in the streets. Not just my parents, I mean everyone. They allowed it in the beginning. I remember distinctly that my mother made like what is called today a community kitchen in our home. She used to cook big, big pots of soup. Soup was, uh, I remember this very, and there were lines outside our house from Eden, from the town, and my mother gave, served them soup or whatever, maybe some bread, I don't know what. It was be uh, soup, I remember, the re and uh, I remember distinctly, I used to always be next to my mother, and one day a pot of soup uh, spilled, on my, uh, on my uh, legs, on my legs, and I was I was burned, and I remember screaming. I don't know, and that's all. But then they, I, eventually I healed, I guess. And uh, but I remember that there, it was. A, I don't know how long this lasted, but uh, my mother must have fed the, the uh, a large percentage of the town. I don't know how they got the food and so on. This I I don't. The, I remember the fact that. My mother, my parents cooked food, and they served soup and uh, some and bread maybe. Uh, Where did the people eat this food? I don't remember this. They may have come with some, uh, with some uh, pot or something. I don't know. Our house could not have taken in all the people. But I do remember the big lines. Were you ever hungry at that time? Yes, I began feeling hu the hunger. I remember I was hungry throughout my camp experience. Before the camp uh, started, in the ghetto itself, also yes, there were periods I was hungry. Yeah, hunger was a hunger was a common experience. I don't remember the the earliest time I I obviously felt hungry even before the Germans came. But uh, I mean, hunger in the sense that I didn't have food. I don't know when it started, but all I remember is throughout my camp experience, I felt hunger. Do you remember leaving your home to go to a ghetto? Not in that sense. I remember le that I, rem I, don't, I remember leaving the home. I didn't know where we were going. Where was the ghetto? In Demblin. In the what town. area of the town? No, in the beginning, the ghetto, like, the, I don't know. I, this, I, 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 this I don't know. I, I cannot, rem I don't know. Uh, uh, yeah, yeah, but I'll, t I'll tell you what I do remember then. After the ghetto, at one time, the Germans made what is called an Aussiedlung. And uh, uh, 
which means they gathered all the Eden of the town, and they have, they had they had their system apparently. I remember I was with my mother, and my brother Yasl. My brother, my mother, uh, I was small, I was young. She carried me on her arms, because it was hard for me to. I didn't walk. I I I think I, I was able to walk. I think, but uh, I Lamaisa, she kept me always on. She carried me. And I remember the following: We were in. A, it was we went by Rose, and all of a sudden, I began to cry. And my mother asked me what was Will's to was was his, and I told her I want to go to be, I want to go to that line to another line. And my mother told me we cannot go there. Why did you want to go there? I don't know. I, I'm just tell. I don't know. I don't. I don't know why. And I began crying, telling it, pointing, or I don't know what, how I did. And I, to, the, to, to the point, I began tearing her hair. And I was screaming, my, and she was afraid, I saw. So at one point, she decided that she began walking to, to take me. At that moment, a German came with a stick or something, I don't remember what, and was about to hit her. And at that very same moment, another Yid also tried to leave his line and go, and, 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 and go someplace. So the German was distracted, and he, had, he began beating that Yid, and we made it to the other line. This, uh, the, I, I, told over, I told this fact to my mother, and she, did, she told me she doesn't know how I, how I remember it, but it's true. And then she told me something else. The line that we were in, they were sent to Sabibo. And they, were, they, 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 they never came back. The line we were in remained in town. We remained in, they had the Germans, basically those Aussiedlungs, uh, these, uh, it was served for selection. They had, they apparently had some people for work, some people for, I don't know what, this, this I, I know from my parents, I don't, I, but I know this, this story is real and we stayed in town, and then the, the ghetto became a camp. Who did at some you leave point. behind in that line? What, did you have any family that was at left? At that line, it was I, my brother Yostl, and, and my mother. My father was not next to us. He was in a different line. Where were your sisters? I don't know. My mother told us that at, at that selection, at that Ausiedlung, they, they were taken to Sabibo. And, they, and also that girl Rochel, our adopted child, she, they never returned. Do you know how old these sisters were at that time? No, I don't know. What happened after that line? Do you know where they I I'll tell you, I, by the, I don't remember the order of things because I was a child, but uh, we were in the camp. In the camp, it was barracks. I do remember barracks. Where did you sleep? Like on bunks. We had uh, like double deckers. Who did you sleep with? Uh, Actually, in the beginning, uh, the barracks were, they allowed families to live in one place. We, I did my, I, I'm almost certain that I was with my father and my mother. I don't remember if my brothers were in the same cubicle that we had. I don't remember this. I remember my father and my mother. I'm almost certain that it was my father and my mother together. And uh, during the day they worked. What did you do when they went to work? I don't know. I don't remember. I I played in the sand. I, it was not. See, our camp, Demblin, was an Arbeits, uh, a labor camp. And we were initially not under the SS. We were under the Volksdeutschen. And they were not bad to us in the beginning. It's only later on the SS came in. Uh, but initially, our camp, the first camp in Demblin, was, uh, must have been one of the nicest camps. They even gave special food for the children in the camp. I remember distinctly, they gave us, I don't know how often, every once in a while, salami. Bread and salami, special for the children. Otherwise, the main, the main food was soup, some sort of watery soup, bread, we did get bread, and potato peels. I, maybe some potatoes too, uh, and sometimes even some eggs. I, I seem to recall eggs. Uh, bread, soup. Soup I remember very well. Soup was the most uh, like sought after food. Uh, Do you know what was in the soup? I don't know. My parents tell me it was basically a lot of water with some bones. 
and maybe something else. I, I, don't, I cannot really say. It, my parents, my mother told me uh, that she never ate the soup because she did, it was treif. And I, I think she told me that she never ate treif during her camp experience. The bread she ate, it's, but, but not the soup. Were there any other children your age there? Yeah. There were many, I don't know how many, there were many children in our camp. Did you ever play? All together, about 30 children survived. Do you know how many started out? I don't know. Did you play with any of the other children? Yeah, yeah, I did, yeah. And in, in, in Demblin, they even allowed it. They didn't... Uh, I'll, I'll tell you what I remember about Demblin itself. Uh, in Demblin, I remember distinctly at one time, my mother baked matzahs for Pesach. How did she get the flour? So I do not know. It's my mother told me afterwards that in that in Demlin, as I said before, we were not under the SS initially. So we were it was barbed wire around the camp. We could not leave the camp. There were, there were those what is it called? Watchtowers. There was watchtowers, and anyway, German Guard soldiers towers. used to go around uh, all the time. They were posted. Besides watchtowers, there was a booth each time, uh, and. Uh, we, they did not, the Eden still had money. I don't know how they did it, but my, my parents told me the Edens, they had diamonds, this, hidden, this. They were able to buy from the Poles. The Poles used to come near the camp. And through the barbed wire, there were exchanges made. The Germans did, didn't even allow it. So people were able to buy extra food, maybe, and the Poles charged a lot of money for it. And so this is how they got the, the flower. And I remember she and it was a Chsid Shayit together did it. His name was, uh, I think, uh, uh, I think Hesler, uh, just a bag, uh, bagelman. Bagelman, yeah, bagel. Oh, what's the like? Anyway, I remember distinctly one day, it was a very tight quarters where she baked. It was against the law. She it means she put her life in danger. If they had caught her, they would have killed her, she told me. Uh, one day, her dress caught fire during the baking, and she quickly threw herself into the sand. The, there was no floor, was sand, and the, she the, the fire was out. She hurt herself, and she didn't. She continued baking, even despite the fact that she was that she was hurt. And I remember the following. No, no, I'm sorry. The, anyway, so some Eden ate matzahs during Pesach. They they did not eat chametz. So afterwards, my mother told me what and my father that what happened was this. Uh, many Yidin became irreligious in, in, during the camp. So the Fchum Yidin and the, the religious and the irreligious made a deal that all the non homistic products, whatever it is, whether it's peels especially, or maybe some eggs, would be given to the Fchum Yidin. And we were supposed, and the, uh, and the Fchum were supposed to give to the irreligious the bread, or whatever was homistic, whatever provisions were homistic. Apparently, they, there was like a meeting where they decided this. They were very, the Eden in the camps, to my, to my recollection, were very helpful, especially to the children. They played with us and they may try to make us feel good and so on. Do uh, you remember if there was a Seder? No, I don't remember a Seder in that sense. No, I don't remember. I do know, I remember eating matzah, but I don't, I didn't know its significance. Maybe my. My, my parents must have told me about Mitzrayim, but I, I, I don't remember this. I do remember the matzah. Do you remember the shape, the size? It was round matzah. Do you know how large it was? I don't remember that. I, I don't remember. It was round matzah. And I'll was tell you... Was there any other yantav you remember there? Well, uh, yeah, I'll, t I'll tell you why. I, it's not an order. I do remember at one time that we davened the tzibu. It was now... Uh, what happened was uh, transport of Eden from Czechoslovakia came. And one day it was, I found myself, like what you call today, like in, in a davening. I didn't know what it meant then. My parents told me, when I told them that I remember this, it was Rosh Hashanah. The Germans allowed the Eden to daven on, the, on Rosh Hashanah Yom Kippur. Not only did they allow us, I think they, they came to here. So this, one of the Czechoslovakia Shehidin was a good cousin. And he davened, I remember him, Nihoni Memas. 
I don't, uh, I, 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 I don't remember how it came about, but I, and I remember he davened very beautifully. Do you remember who it was? No, I, that was even, I don't remember. And uh, otherwise, uh, davening, and uh, again, I didn't even know what that means, davening, I, but uh, I remember distinctly that people were holding some sort of book in their hands and they were reading from it. And uh, anyway, my parents told me they had some sidurim yet, and some maybe some achzoyrim yet, and they managed to daven, and the whole camp came to, to daven. Was there a chauffeur? I don't remember. I do, there was a chauffeur I know. I do know that there was a chauffeur. When we come, I'll tell you later on when I come to Chainsterhof. I'll tell you what happened there. But uh, uh, I, I don't remember that. I do not remember the blowing of Schaefer. Most likely they did have it. And I'll tell you, uh, in, not in order again, what else I remember that happened in, in Demblin. Uh, at one time, what, hap what, the, what the Eden were basically doing work for the Germans, all kinds of work. Because in, in Demblin, there was also an airport. Demblin had a small airport. Even though it was a small town, somehow then the, maybe the Germans even put it up. I don't know. And the, anyway, the Germans used that airport very much, and many Eden worked there. They also worked there outside the camp. Yeah, they have a special permit to come and go. Uh, like I think my brother had a permit to leave town. I, uh, he worked outside the camp. Uh, they used to have every once in a while, like they counted us. How many are there? They're there. Like in a prison, they what is it called? Uh, the camps, it was the appels. Uh, and the appels, right, the appels, right, correct. Yeah, so uh, there's, an, and how I do... How frequent? What? Do you remember how frequent that was? I don't remember the frequency. I just remember this was a common thing. And uh, I do remember that, uh, just just a minute, something, so yes, just a second, that I do remember a public hanging. At one time, I did not know what was behind, I'll soon tell you what my parents told me. I do remember the whole camp was assembled. The Germans hanged one yeet. My brother even knows his name, he told me, I forgot. They hanged one yeet and one yeet was beaten very badly, in publicly, like a public, a public lashing. And the Germans, the, whoever spoke, uh, gave us a warning that if this happens, we are all responsible, that's what's going to happen to all of us. So apparently what happened was that 10 Yidin from the, from the camp, the leader's name was Label, and now I know his name was Label uh, Lehman, Lehman or Lehman, they made a, a little rebellion against the Germans, they killed a number of Germans, they took away their weapons, and they escaped. So because of this, the Germans made this assembly, where they hanged one yeet and they told us that if this happens again, we are all going to get it. And uh, that I remember distinctly. It was a very scary uh, experience because they made sure that this, I think they, this yeet was hanging a whole day. That's the end of our tape.